to the Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide, the home of righteousness, holiness, sanctification, and truth. Horimo is a non-denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and material. Pastor Paul Ricker has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director. An anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide. I know the thoughts I think towards you for bringing you here. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you what I plan for your life. The good thing you desire for yourself. But as you have come, ye shall pray unto me and seek me and search for me with all your heart. And you will find your God and be happy with him. Yes, you will be happy with him. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, we are so grateful for another conference and for another set of people coming in to join us in your worship. You brought them. You brought all of us. You will do us good. And so we thank you, Father. We want to say we love you. We appreciate you. We are happy with you. Your ways are good unto us. You are our creator. Our father. We are your children. We are happy. We are satisfied. Therefore, Lord, this fellowship we're having with you during this period, in this conference, conference you have given to us for this year, I'm asking, Lord, you will be glorified. We will be happy the more. And we shall win victories over the devil, over sin, over the flesh, over the world. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are welcome. This is Holiness Revival Movement non-denominational. And you are welcome to our International Holiness Conference theme, Love, Forgiveness, and Holy Living. We are taking the first message from God to you, titled, The Spiritual Man and the Spiritual Church. The Spiritual Man and the spiritual church. In John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. 
God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We worship God as individuals. That's why we talk about the spiritual man. The spiritual man is he that worships God in spirit. God is looking for spiritual people. For the Lord seeketh such to worship him. God is looking for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. God is not a man. God is not in the flesh. Spirit don't have flesh. Spirits don't have flesh. So, God is not of the flesh. Hence, you will not come and be demonstrating some things in your flesh and think you are worshipping God. He said, I am looking for people that will worship me in spirit and in truth. I am looking for people that will worship me in spirit and in truth. And the Bible says in verse 24 they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. This involves serving God according to the word of God and by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In the worship of God, as I said, the flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing. In John chapter 3, I read verse 3 to verse 8. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How much more of worshipping him? You don't belong there if you are not born again. So, apart from being born again to become a spiritual man, there is no other way you can worship this God. In verse 8, verse 5 rather, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Not to talk about worshipping him. Because he is a spirit. To worship God acceptably, rightly, you must be born again. It's a spiritual exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. Born of water. The water there speaks of the word of God. Being cleansed by the word of God. Born of the spirit. Is talking about the miracle of change. Performed by the Holy Spirit. In the life of a sinner. When he comes to God through Jesus Christ. 
born again. That miracle of change in character, in attitude, that comes upon a man, upon a woman, upon a young man, young lady, a child, when he believes in Jesus, that is wrought in him by the working of the Holy Spirit, whereby the Spirit uses the world to cleanse him from sin, regenerate him, and make him conform to the nature of God and the image of Christ. Except this is done, you can't worship God. As I say, the flesh profited nothing, profits nothing. In John chapter 6, verse 63, the Bible tells us here, saying, it is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Can you get that? It is the spirit that gives life. That empowers you to serve the Lord. It's not the flesh. The words that I speak to you, they are spiritual words. The words are the ones that give you life, eternal life. So, worshipping God in the spirit, be born again. Worshipping God in the truth, follow the word of God. Practice the word of God. It is there. You are worshipping the Lord. In Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 8. For they that are after the flesh do bind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So then, I mean verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can, can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Can you see? You will notice something here that is commonly done elsewhere in worship which you have not seen and will not see until you leave this place. It is this dancing that people go into and say they are worshipping God. That is the flesh. That is the flesh. It's a deceit to spend time dancing, dancing and feel it is worship to God. God is not in the flesh that is delighted by your dancing. He is delighted by your practice of his word. He is delighted by the practice of his word. Other people spend their time singing. They are thinking that with the much songs, they are worshipping God. Singing is good. It's part of worship. But it's not what constitutes worship. The first thing must be done before singing will follow. Otherwise, your singing is not worship. God is not in the flesh to be delighted by the music of your songs. Look at it in the book of Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I read verse 7. The scripture says in Psalm 119 verse 7. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when 
I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Can you see that singing is second place to the world? God is seeking such. Singing doesn't make you spiritual. But God is looking for spiritual people to worship him. What makes a man spiritual is when he is after the things of the spirit. He is regenerated by the spirit and is following the word of truth. Practicing the word of truth. That will give you uprightness of heart. That will give you righteousness of heart. That will give you holiness of heart. Then you can sing. That song, song is called spiritual song. It is then you can sing. Otherwise, don't think when you wake up and start singing, start dancing, you are worshipping God. No. God is a spirit. And them that must worship God, must worship him in spirit and in truth. By being born again and by practicing the, the word. The Bible says, sanctify them by your word. Thy word is truth. And Jesus says, the ways that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God that you practice and follow and obey is worship. Therefore, real worship is obedient to the commandments of God. To obedience to the commandments of God. Submitting yourself to the world. Real worship is practicing the world, submitting to the world, doing the, the, the commandments of God. That is where worship is. Other things, singing, follows later. It's called spiritual song, as I've told you. Hence, in my message, I'm talking to you on the spiritual man. The spiritual man. As the Lord grants us grace, the spiritual church. Then, warning against carnality in the church. The spiritual man. John chapter 3, verse 3 to verse 8. The Bible says, John 3, 3 to verse 8. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And I mean, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Jesus was talking to a religious ruler, a minister of the word of God. He said, you are still a carnal man, a natural man. You need an experience in your life. And that experience is called born again. The man was surprised. How? Is it that this big me will enter again into my mother's womb and come out again? It's in, practically impossible by nature. Jesus said, no, it is a spiritual transformation that comes to a man through the hearing of the word application of the word, the conviction of the word, which is water there, and the working of the Holy Spirit in a supernatural way in which his life is changed. 
miraculously changed. A new nature is put into him. He starts thinking differently. God becomes sweet to his life. He comes back to himself in his reasoning. Like the prodigal son that came back to himself. Something happened to him that made him to go back to reconcile with his father and submit to him. That has to happen. You must come to yourself and go back to God and reason with God and seek forgiveness from God. Then God also reach out to you, reaches out to you by embracing you, changing your cloth, taking the rags out of your life, your dirty life. All those things you have messed up yourself with, the attitude, the mannerisms, the, the relationships, and all, the bad way you do things, speak, leave. He will remove all dust from you and say, bring a new garment upon him and change him, put shoes upon him. So, and all these are being done to show you have now been a child, restored, recovered. He said, for this my child was dead. Now he is alive. He was lost. Now he is found. Born again. Everybody say, born again. Is then he is qualified to be in that house and join those that will be praising the Father. Will be coming to see the Father. That's what we're saying. And this is expected of your life. So, the spiritual man, therefore, is the man that is born again. The spiritual woman is the woman that is born again. Again, he is indwelled by the spirit of Christ. If none, if if you don't know, if, if, if any has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you don't belong to him. What spirit? The same spirit of Christ that gives you the new birth. Lives in you to keep you in righteousness. To manifest in you the fruit of the spirit. The life of righteousness. So that you cannot do those things anymore. You can't go back to immorality. You can't go back to drunkenness. You can't go back to stealing. You can't go back to lying. You can't go back to those things anymore because he serves you, he changed you and remains in you. That's the spirit of Christ. So the spiritual man is indwelled by the Holy Spirit. He is enlightened by the Holy Spirit and enabled to see and understand spiritual things. The things of God. Because God is spiritual. God is not a man. If you will flow with God, you must understand him in the spirit, in, in, in a spiritual way. In the book of uh, Philippians, chapter 1, verse, I mean, first Corinthians rather, chapter 2, verse 12 to 15. First Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 12, to 15, to 15, the Bible tells us, saying, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which be of God, that we might know, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak. Not in the ways which man's wisdom teacher, but which the Holy Ghost teacher comparing spiritual, spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man, the one that is not born again, receiveth not the spirit, the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But, he that is spiritual judges all things, and yet he himself is judged of no man. You see, you need to be in the spirit to understand the things of God. Otherwise you will not know. Even as we are saying Jesus is coming, it requires a man that is spiritual to understand the language of the spirit. We will talk about the events of the world. 
that show that the world is rounding up. It takes the spiritual person that will understand her. Otherwise, the natural man doesn't understand her. You tell the natural man, Jesus is coming. Jesus is returning. He does not understand what you are saying. What are you talking about? All these years they have been telling me Jesus is coming. Forget that one. That's the natural man. That's the natural man. So, you need... The spiritual man is the one that understands the things of the spirit. If a spiritual man is here, he will just be rejoicing. He will just be happy. God, you have brought me to that place. This is where I have been longing for. This is where the psalmist say, I've been longing to appear before God in Jerusalem. My heart has been seeking it. I've been crying, when will I appear before the Lord? When they say, let us go to Jerusalem, it's a joy unto me. It's a spiritual man. He understands the, the, what, the meaning of Jerusalem. He understands that the presence of God will be enjoyed in Jerusalem. He knows that. But the natural man will say, is it this place you brought me? There's no food enough. I'm hungry. Where will I sleep? Come. Where am I here? What, how long are we going to be here? I don't think I can stay for those number of days. That's the natural man. He can't understand. Whatever we're saying here, he can't understand. Why? He's not, he's not born again. He's not a spiritual man. But Bible says, for God is a spirit. And they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Lord seeketh such to worship him. And to you that feel inconvenient, I am saying, God wants you to worship him in spirit. God wants you to accept the word of God. And allow the Holy Spirit to have access into your life. So you too can be brought to this refined understanding of the spiritual people. Again, the spiritual man has the mind of Christ. He has the mind of Christ. In verse 16 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, For we, for who knoweth the mind of, of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. All our desire is what Christ desires. Our thoughts is to be where Christ wants us to be. We desire the salvation of people. The righteousness of people. We desire the holiness of people. The well-being of people. That people be delivered from the hand of Satan. That people don't go to hell. That they go to heaven instead. The spiritual man has the mind of Christ. We are ready to suffer. Suffer for you. To labor for you. We will be laboring for you. Laboring, preparing. How, where you will sleep. How you will eat. In this conference. We are doing all. Day and night. We have the mind of Christ. We are thinking good about you. We are thinking we want God to be glorified in your life. We want the will of God to be done in your life. We have the mind of Christ. Whatever sacrifice is required of us, we will do it for you. So that you can have the best of life. We want you to go to heaven. We want you to inherit eternal life. We want the power of Satan to be broken in your life. So that you should be free. We want God to wipe away the tears of your sorrow. Why? We have the mind of Christ. We are thinking good of you. And we are praying for you. That the Lord will meet with you here. That as you have come seeking him, you will find him. I'm talking about the spiritual man. In, fe in Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and verse 10. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, 
that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. That is our prayer, that you will be able to judge what is right, that you will see what is going on, you will listen to the messages and understand that God is in this world indeed. You will see the glory of God and perceive it. And that you will have spiritual understanding. You will understand everything in a spiritual way. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. For this cause we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. We desire that you will have spiritual understanding. You will understand things in the way of God. You will be seeing things as God sees them. You will see good things as God sees them. What about evil things? See evil things as God sees them. Then nothing will move you. Job told his wife, have we received good? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin. Because he had spiritual understanding. What did he understand in the evil way of the, those evil things? He said, he knew the way that I take. After he has tried me, he shall bring me forth as God. Can you see spiritual understanding? In this way, he is not offended with God. He is not offended with man. No, he is not. We even win the wife tempted him, cursed God and died. He didn't mess it up with his wife. Why? He understood his wife in a spiritual way. Oh, some foolish women speak like this. Women who don't have the wisdom of God speak like this. It's the, oh, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. Have we received good from the Lord? And shall we not receive evil? Come, don't we have bitter things on, on earth? Even we eat bitter leaves. Does it kill us? So with this spiritual understanding, Job was excellent in his life. That's why God boasted of him. So we want you to come to this level. That you will see things in a spiritual way. If you see it so, then you will actually agree. God doesn't make mistakes. You will read the handwritings of God and praise him. Even what people curse, people abuse, you will be seeing good out of it. Hallelujah! The spiritual man. He understands things in spiritual way. He is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And the ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Judea. I mean, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He is empowered by the Holy Spirit to work for God. So he's doing things by the help of the Spirit. He's not doing it by himself. When you start murmuring, it's because you are not, you are losing spiritual side. You are losing it. Moses was complaining, oh Lord, this work is wearing me away. He didn't know of the great quantity and power of the Spirit in his life. The Lord said, okay, take 17 men to you, to, to, to the mountain. I'm going to take of the Spirit I put in you and pour it upon them. You're doing this thing by the Holy Spirit. Why are you murmuring? You're not, you, you're not saying things spiritual. Do you know that the more they walk, the more the grace? The spiritual man knows this. And that's what the Bible says. God seeketh such people that will understand things in the spirit, in a spiritual way, in the way God sees it. 
The Lord seeketh such to worship him. The Lord seeketh such to use. The Lord seeketh for such to follow him. Because Satan will mean nothing in your presence. Evil will mean nothing because you know that evil shall eventually turn to good. Why? For all things work it for good. For to, to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. So, brother, sister, the Lord is looking for spiritual men. The God of heaven is calling for spiritual women to worship him. To follow him. Not these dancers that are dancing up and down in naked clothing in the churches. No! Not just singers. Everywhere is full of music now. Not that, not that. I mean people regenerated. Understanding him in a spiritual way. They understand. People, such people are not bounded by denominationalism. By, oh, I belong to this denomination. They knew that the church Jesus brought is one. They knew that the person that matters in life and Christianity is Jesus. Not any general overseer. Not any general superintendent. Because they know if they die today, relationship with man is finished. It's with God now. And so what is paramount is to do the will of God. My food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Spiritual understanding spiritual understanding the lord is seeking search to worship him what about understanding that you are nothing that you are nothing not even looking to yourself but god i am nothing i am nothing i am nothing the, i'm telling you god wants this spiritual understanding that you're not stand, counting on the gifts of your life no, but on righteousness and holiness. Because though I have faith to move mountain, and I have no love, no righteousness, no holiness, I am nothing. Though I have power to cast out devils, though I can speak in tongues, though I can do this, but I have not the righteousness of God, the charity of God, the life of God, I am nothing. The spiritual man understands this. So his mind is righteousness. My righteousness. Paul said it. That I might be found in him. Not having my own righteousness. Which is of the law. But the righteousness. of Which is by faith in Christ. That is what I am looking for. Not my righteousness. Not that to show people. See me here. I am I am. I'm doing well. I am a great man of God. No. It does God see me so. That is the concern of the spiritual man. Maybe that man will be thinking like me that says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. Whatever I am achieving now, what you can you are free to greet me. Even God can greet me for it. But I should not boast about it. Because many have done these things and became and, and became cast away. So it is the end that justifies the means. It is the end of a thing that is better. This is the thought of the spiritual man. The way is his pride. Many have fallen. Many greater than him, better than him have fallen. He should, he should go gently. He should go humbly. Spiritual understanding. God seek a search to worship him. He's a man guided and directed by the Holy Spirit guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, John 16, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. And shall show it unto you. The spiritual man. Is guided by the Holy Spirit. In all his ways. In his thoughts. In his actions. In his relationships. In his plan. Everything about him. 
The tongue of the learned studieth to answer. The spiritual man is saying, Holy Ghost, how do I answer these people? What do I do? Should I go? Should I not go? He is guided. As many as are laid by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. God seeketh such to worship Him. God, not this fleshly thing you're doing. Not this carnal kind of life you're living. You live on your own. Holy Ghost is not aware. You don't seek his mom in your relationship with your husband. You don't ask God, do I do it? How do I answer my husband? How do I treat my wife, you, husband? How do, what do I do to my wife? What do I, how do I answer? With this now, with this attitude displayed, how do I treat it? How do I do, church man? How do I answer the church? How do I do it to this member? How do I do, you're not asking God. They that must worship God must be spiritual. Worshiping Him in spirit and in truth, the spiritual man. Yes. He is walking in spirit and not in the flesh. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Spiritual man. This is what God is looking for. Man, you just have to be spiritual. You must end up all your carnal life here today. You must end up all your carnal life in this conference. Spirituality will fill you up. That rack that is put on you, prodigal man, will be removed. And the cloth of righteousness, the one God is looking for, will come and cover you up. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. The Bible says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The spiritual man is walking in the spirit. Not by the desires of your heart. No. Jesus said something. Father, of desire, I desire that you remove this cup from me. But <laughs> not my will. But thine be done. I have come according to the books written concerning me. Prophecies have gone before that I am coming to suffer. I am coming to suffer for people that I will even die. Not my will. Thine be done. That God seeketh such. The Lord is looking for people like that. Many people are dead people. They are not even alive. Not to talk about being spiritual. They are not even alive. And yet they are Christians. They worship God in their way. This is the way to worship Him. This is how you will say you are a Christian. Worshipping God. Laid by the Spirit. Guided by the Spirit. Yes. The spiritual man is a man given to meditation and obedience to the word in the word of God. Is given to the world. He obeys it. He studies it. He listens to it. Because the word is the delight of his life. It is the fruit. Um, it is the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spiritual man is the word. The fruit of the spiritual man is the word of God. The fruit of the spiritual man is the word of God. Everybody say that. Say it again. Is the word of God. I received a call from someone who came here and said, Pastor, I am hungry. I am very hungry. He has come to eat. You will eat to satisfaction in this place. Yeah. Hunger for the word of God. For blessed are they that hunger and taste after righteousness. They shall be filled. Thy word was found and I did eat it. Thy word was in my mouth as honey. That's my pleasure. I, it gives me joy. I am so happy to find your word. I rejoice in thy word. As he that rejoices after much spoil. That he has found much spoil. He has discovered much booties. That is carrying home. I have got the word. But 
my eyes have opened. I've got more promises. Oh, it descends into me with all sweetness. I can feel it. I can see it. the jaw. It has enlightened me. It has enlivened me. It's like electricity in my life. That's what the world is doing. The delight of your word is so great. I swim in it. Oh Lord, I lie upon your voice. Joy. Hallelujah. That is the fruit of the spiritual man. The world. The world. The world. Don't take away my teacher from me. Don't take away your promises from me. Don't take away your word from me. I need this word. I want to study it. I want to listen to it. I want to listen. Lord, speak. Your servant hear it. Speak. Your servant hear it. It is the delight of my life. It is the joy of my life. In the day. In the night. I every moment. Spiritual man. Now Charaban doesn't know this. They said the message is too long. Is it already too long now? They said the message is too long. Kai is enough. Let's go and rest. Now Charaban. The Lord will change your life today. The Lord will change your life in this conference. The spiritual life of God is going to come upon you. In the book of Psalm 119, I read verse 9 to verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to thy word. With my whole heart, I have sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word was, was, thy, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. The word, the word. Verse 17. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. And it's a, keeping it is a pleasure. It's a joy to practice it. Open down mine eyes that I may be, behold wondrous things out of thy law. Spiritual man, we're here together. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will give you joy. I say the Lord will give you joy. The Lord will give you satisfaction. Spiritual woman, you will carry many things from the presence of God home. You will carry many things. Many gifts shall be given to you. The pleasure of the world. Pleasure of the world. How? What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. To enjoy the power of the world. To enjoy the blessing of the world. Yes, verse 20. My soul break it for the, for the longing that it had unto thy judgment at all times. I'm getting re restless. When will this conference start? I'm getting restless. I've come for the world. I want to hear it. When will it start? It has started. I say it has started. The word of God has started. Rain has started. Rain has started. In a short time, you will see water flowing everywhere here. I say you will see water flowing out everywhere here. Because of the power of the world, the bounty of the world, you will take your bath. Your clothes shall be white. Your heart shall be white. Your life shall be white. By the power of the world of life. Spiritual man. You're welcome. Shake her and say she's welcome. The spiritual man. Tell her, tell him he is welcome. For the Lord seeketh such. These are the people that enjoy the Lord. These are the people that the Lord blesses them. Because the life of God is a delight unto them. God is a joy unto them. The spiritual man. Yes. The spiritual man. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very good for you. You're welcome. I'm so happy with you. I'm so happy. And by the grace of God, I'm prepared for you too. Because I am a spiritual man. I say I am a spiritual man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is a man of fervent prayers. He will pray. He's going to pray over everything. I'm going to seek the face of God. You will watch him in this conference. You will watch her in this conference. You will see him pray. He will pace up and down on the streets of this camp for prayer. You will see him sit under a tree somewhere for prayer. You will see him come and kneel in the hall for prayer. You will see him maybe pick a fellow of his somewhere. You will see her. 
mean, it's somebody, because something, talk something to God, or just go before the Lord and laugh. I'm talking about spirituality. Something is just welling up in you. Go and laugh. Just go before God and laugh. <laughs> I've come. God, you have started. God, you have, the spiritual man. Something is moving. Go and talk something to God. Okay, that thing, that thing now, I have come here. I'm going to create time. Spiritual man. God will make this conference wonderful for your life. A man of prayer. Yes. A man that will pray. A man that is going to pray. Is going to seek the face of God. Yes. Is going to love the Lord. The spiritual man. The spiritual man. Yes. I'm talking about the spiritual man. He is a man. You will give him to love. You will see him love you. you can, what offense can you do to such a man? Nothing. What offense? That you will turn that man to fight or to speak evil words? No. He's prepared for you already. His spirit is equipped, ready to resist the devil automatically. That spiritual man. His spirit is equipped. All arrows shot by Satan shall return. <laughs> I say they shall return. I say they shall return. The spiritual man does not need to say back to send that they will be going automatically. Don't try him. Don't try the spiritual man. Otherwise, you'll be digging the pit for your life. I'm telling you, he will love people. He will do you good. The spiritual man. Now, having spoken so much of the spiritual man, let's say something about the spiritual church. The spiritual church. Yes. Upon this rock, I will build my church. That's a spiritual church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. As for the physical church, gates of hell have prevailed against them. They have burned down many churches and the members scattered. Is that not prevailing against them? But the spiritual church, no. Gates of hell, the forces of the devil shall not prevail against it. Shall not. It's a spiritual it's a spiritual assembly. As the head of the church is spiritual, the Lord Jesus himself. So also, his body, the church, is a spiritual church. The church of Christ is committed to sacred matters of Christianity that affect the soul and spirit of man. That is the spiritual church. It's dealing with your spirit. Your soul. The child is concerned with your spirit. Your soul. To get your soul saved from sin. To get your spirit sanctified. To get your life perfected. That's the aim of the church. The spiritual church. It is the corrupt church. That wants to make the people satisfied physically. By bringing jokers to them. To make jokes. Comedians. Then they laugh. And say, they laugh away your problem. Can you laugh away problem? Laugh away stomach ache, let me see. Even if, if that stomach ache can even allow you to laugh. But, that's the, that's carnality. But the spiritual church is interested to get sicknesses and diseases out of your life. It's interested to bring the glory of the Lord. Now, all our thought here is, how can you be changed? How can you become better than you are? Our prayer is, oh Lord, make them better. Make them better. Father, solve their problems. Open their eyes that they may see. Let them see you, Lord. Let them not see man. Let them see the Lord. Man has nothing to do, but God has all things to do. The spiritual church 
is concerned for your eternal life. How you will go to heaven. Working hard that you may not go to hell. That's the spiritual church. You are in a spiritual church. I say you are in a spiritual church. And we will make effort on your life. That things will be better in your life. That when you go back, those who see, that who see you will say, we are seeing the glory of the Lord in your life. Yeah. The church of Christ is committed to spiritual things. And so, the spiritual church deals majorly with the salvation of souls of men through faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. The holiness of men for conformity to Christ. Deliverance of men from hell and getting them to heaven through the word of truth and holiness. Hence, the following are the characteristics of the spiritual church. Number one, it is led by the, by the spiritual man or leader. It is led by spiritual men or leaders. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 the Bible says and I will give you pastors according to my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Which pastors are according to God's heart but spiritual pastors? And when these pastors are over you, it is said, every tree bears fruit after its kind. That is it. The spiritual church is laid by the spiritual man. It's not possible for a carnal man to lead a church and that church be spiritual is impossible. Can men gather uh, grapes of tistles? Can men gather figs from tons of, of tistles? On, 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 can you gather sweet fruit from sour, from evil fruit, evil trees? That's what he's saying. A, an evil man. An evil pastor can never produce a clean person. If somebody washes his cloth and the cloth, the water is very dirty, and he say, put your cloth inside and wash, can that cloth be clean? That is it. All that are in the flesh, carnal pastors, can never produce righteous church. Have you thought like that before? Have you thought to examine the life of your pastor to know that this man who cannot save himself cannot save me? This man that cannot change himself cannot change me. Have you thought like that? Come, pastor, have you also noticed that you yourself that cannot, that you see yourself still in sin, that you cannot save another person? No man is greater than his master. The servant is not above his master. It is enough, it is sufficient that a servant be as his master is. And if the master is still in bondage, can the servant be free under him? That's the question. Where should men joke with their souls? Where should men be marching to doom and nobody is talking about it? And they are not aware of it. So, as it is said, the spiritual ch church is laid by the spiritual man. I will give you pastors according to my heart. Are all pastors according to God's heart? Are all pastors subject to God's word? Are all pastors true pastors? You cannot therefore get the truth from them. Learn this thing and take and think again. If you want to go to heaven. Otherwise, you have failed. And the failure of today will answer tomorrow. It will, it will answer after your death. 
Learn this, you who want to go to heaven. And I will give you pastors after my heart. What are these pastors going to do? Who shall teach you knowledge? Who shall give you knowledge and understanding? Whose knowledge? Mechanical knowledge? Academic knowledge? Knowledge of arithmetic? Knowledge of politics? Knowledge of Christian science? Knowledge, spirit, knowledge of spiritual things? Understanding of spiritual things? They shall give you spiritual understanding. That you may understand things in God's way. You have been frustrated because you are not seeing things in the way God sees it. You are easily irritable because you are not seeing things in the way God sees it. You spoil relationship with people. They have offended you. This man has offended me. I won't talk to him again. Because you are not seeing things in the way God sees it. These pastors will give you spiritual understanding. That you may see things the way God sees them. You will follow the footpath of God. By the grace of God. You have come to that place. Spiritual, spiritual me will handle you here. You will see things differently from today. Your understanding shall be enlightened. The cobwebs of the devil that, that cover your senses. They shall be wiped away. Amen. Yes, I'm talking about the spiritual church. Here, yeah, I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it. I will give you pastors after my heart. And what about the spiritual church? It feeds upon sound doctrines of eternal life. The spiritual church. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Every word, every word, come, does God, did God speak yesterday? His words are written in this book. Does God speak today? But some don't know that God speaks today. They take God as a statue. He is just fixed. Nothing again. What is written about him, that's all. Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. And he speaks, as he spoke yesterday, he is speaking today. And he shall speak tomorrow. The spiritual church is fed by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Be they written or revealed. Be they written or spoken. Be they written or prophesied. Is the word. Is it coming out of the mouth of God? Is it verified? To come out of the mouth of God? Is it authenticated? By the written word of God? Then it's for our feeding. It's for our feeding. Despite not prophesying. Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Hold fast that which is good. He that prophesied, speak it unto me for a defying, for a defying, for comfort. He speak it unto me and prophesying is still there. So the lost is peace. The spiritual church feeds its own people with every word that pro 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 proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the word should give us eternal life. Titus chapter 2, I mean chapter 1, Titus chapter 1. I read from verse 1 to verse 3. Paul, a servant of Christ, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but had in due times manifested his word through preaching, 
which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Can you see? According to the commandment of God our Savior. He is saying, I am Paul, called to serve God, to minister to the saints, and speak to them of the faith of the of faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, and to tell them the truth that produces godliness. That's one thing you say about the truth. The truth, evidence of truth, is that it produces godliness. Teach the people the truth, you will want you will watch them do wonderfully. There are many people seated here now. That if they go around and find somebody's money fall to the fall to the ground, they will never pick it. Are you there? Are you one of them? Where are you sitting? Oh, the number of the people are, has increased. Number has increased. Wow! They have learned the truth on restitution. Is that clear? That's what Paul is saying. The truth is after godliness. The truth produces godliness. The truth, which is after godliness. And what for? What is the purpose of your godliness? In hope of eternal life. The reason why you're godly, the reason why you're righteous, the reason why you're not committing sin, is because you want to go to heaven. The reason why you're not stealing anymore, you're not com- you are not going to immorality anymore. You are not telling lies. You are cl- correcting your ways. It's in hope of eternal life. Now, who told you about this eternal life? Which God that cannot lie promised. That God who cannot lie promised before the world began that I will give eternal life to righteous people. I will give to eternal life to godly people. I will give eternal life to people who have come out of sin. It is the promise of God. He promised this thing long before the world began. I will give eternal life to people who fell, who fell into sin and have come back to me. I will give them eternal life as long as they follow the truth. Truth gives godliness. Godliness gives eternal life. Where truth is not there, godliness will never be practiced there. And eternal life doesn't exist there. Where there's no truth, if your church does not teach the truth, it's not possible to live a godly life there, and then eternal life cannot be found there. Simple. However many you are, Fill, dig a hole and fill it with water. It can be water and you can make it a swimming pool. You won't find fish there. It's not connected to where fish will come. So the multitude of your church, of the church members, doesn't mean eternal life is there. It's not connected to the source because truth is not there. Truth is not there. Hey, godliness is not there. Check up in their life. Will you see godliness? Do you see godliness in their lives? Do you see godliness in their clothing? Do you see godliness in their relationship? Then where will you find eternal life? But where there is godliness, there is the hope of eternal life. And I am convinced people here are going to heaven. Amen. I had a revelation myself that what happened that I had died. And I appeared before the gate of heaven and I enter heaven very freely, very cheaply. Say, hey, so this heaven is very simple. So people can enter it freely. I will either be simple to the godly person who has known the truth, who is practicing the truth. He will enter freely. You will enter freely. God will open the door of heaven. You will enter freely because you have learned the truth that produces godliness and has given you eternal life. Praise the Lord. That is it. That is it. Yes. Which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but had in due times manifested his word 
true preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Peter was still alive when Paul was saying this. John was still alive when Paul was saying this. But he said here that this thing is committed unto me. God raises up people and commits the ministry to them. God raises up people and commits unto them the ministry of eternal life. He commits unto them the word of truth. Paul here said, it is committed unto me. Please, therefore, if you see such a person that the Lord has committed this truth to, go there, because we serve one God. Don't allow politics to affect you. Don't allow denominational, denominationalism to affect you. You will miss it. The Lord raised up someone and committed the ministry of eternal life. The word of truth. I say, take it. And we know what he did to Paul. He has done so in our generation. Those who come to holiness movement, they know that the Lord has committed this truth unto us. It is here. I say the truth of eternal life is here. It is here. Hallelujah. My wife will come and tell you about the building of this house. Jesus came and was supervising this story building himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to hear it. But one of the things he said is that many comes, iniquity have filled it and have left them, left their place. But this place, my eyes are there. Because this is where my word is being published. And the world is made to know me. My attention is here. Hallelujah. The truth is here. The word is here. Word of, of eternal life. So the spiritual church is faith upon the word of eternal life. That's what Paul said to Titus in Titus chapter 2 verse 1. Paul told him saying, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Speak the things that are sound. Teach the correct thing about life, about relationship, about serving God, about Christian dressing. Teach sound doctrine. Don't mind those who want to go their way. Allow them to go. The tree, the, the wood that is smoking and it's not burning. Won't you remove it? If you don't remove it, it will inconvenience you. Not only you, but all that are in that house. So the one that doesn't want can go. But you will be surprised. Many will want it. How many of you want the truth? Oh, you want the truth? Oh, you need the truth? Uh, put down your hand. Let me hear from women. Women, how many of you want to be told that you should not wear earrings and you'll be happy? This earrings is a serious thing. How many of you? Thank you so much. Teach the things that become sound doctrine. That's what Paul exhorted Timothy. That is what is taught in a spiritual church. Yes, in a spiritual church. A spiritual church is totally under the control of the Holy Spirit. Totally, not partially. Totally. And I add, it is submissive to to Christ Jesus, the only Lord of the church. While you are here, we direct, we instruct, but we do not lord it over you. Why? We already have a Lord. His name is Jesus. We are not going to become your Lord. We direct your eyes to him. You are, he is your Lord. We direct your eye. So the spiritual church is directed to the spirit, is, is, is directly under the spirit, under Jesus Christ and supervised by the Holy Spirit. I told you a revelation message. I'm sure you would have heard it many times that when we were in Kenya, the Lord Jesus came with one of his angels in a revelation. I said, my son, I go to various places to prepare where you will come. 
I am coming now from a nearby place. And he said, I went to one man of God. This man of God has been preaching himself to his people. I went to him and said, preach me to your church. Preach me, me. It's me you should preach. And the man said, what about myself? If I preach you, then what about me? I need the people to know me too. I need to make the people know me. To maybe serve me. He said, when he was saying this, my angel wanted to smite him. I said, no, stop, stop, stop. Judgment is not yet now. That's what many people are doing. They're preaching themselves. Not Jesus. That is why the people don't know God. The people are in the assemblies. They know them. Baba. Uh, uh, what do they call them again? Daddy. What are that thing? Papa. Then which other one? That Geo. Which other one again? The, that is what preoccupies them. That is what fills them. Their eyes are not seeing Jesus. That is why when these ones give a commandment, whatever the Bible says, the people are not hearing, you will follow them. Whatever the Bible says, they are not hearing. They will follow them. When a commandment was given, Born the cities of Revelation. They never checked up. Is this from God? No, our leader has said it. Well, who's God again? They have blindfolded the eyes of people and to Jesus and have made themselves lords over the church. But the spiritual church recognizes Jesus alone. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is our Lord. Only Jesus we will serve. Do you know how happy Jesus is with that statement? Very happy. Jesus is comforted with that statement. Because he, he died on the cross and founded a church. And men have taken over it. Men have taken over. And, and now the one eating and getting far. People recognize them and no more Jesus. People recognize them. But in a spiritual church, Jesus is the Lord. Just as you have shouted it, Jesus is the Lord of the spiritual church. Yes. The members love God and serve Him in righteousness and holiness. Members of a spiritual church. They love God. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your strength. And with all your mind. Spiritual church. Love God. It is the, He is the one. That created you. That is sustaining you. That is give you daily grace. That has brought you. That saved you. That has prepared a place for you in heaven. Therefore love the Lord your God. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your mind. And with all your might. Love him. Love him. Love him. Move in love in this place. Live in love in this place. The spiritual church love their fellow men and maintain love, peace, and holiness before them. Love your neighbor as yourself. A new commandment have I given unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you. So, that ye love one another. In this we shall mean no 
Ye are my disciple. If they have love one for another. Therefore, we are in a spiritual church. Demonstrate love. Love. Please love. Love freely. Love happily. You are not a big man. Be the smallest man here. Because if any man will be yours, be a, a master, let him be a servant. Let him be a servant. And therefore don't be, don't show, don't be too big to receive love or to give love. Receive it from your brethren. This is a spiritual church. Receive it. Give it out. We are in a spiritual church. Receive it. It, it is give and take. What we give and take is love. 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 Treat your brother well. Treat your sister well. Treat one another well. Do what is right. Do what is clean. Love. The spiritual church. That's what God is telling us. The spiritual church is a church that has learned to do good works. Do good to God. Do good to your fellow men. Fetch water for him. Give him food to eat. Help him in one way or the other. Buy a product and give your neighbor. Give your brother. Make somebody happy. Make somebody feel great. Make somebody feel far. You are created to good works. You are created to good work. Let your light so shine. Before me. In this conference. That they may see your good life. And praise God. Don't manifest anger here. Don't manifest wickedness here. Yes. Live in expectation of the return of Christ. In the rapture. Who is coming to take the church to heaven. And reward their faithfulness. That spiritual church. They are waiting for Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Have you imagined. That maybe is in this conference. That the Lord will come in the conference of, I think maybe 2017. The time we preach this message, God's judgment against sin and sinners. The Lord remarked that if I had come at this time, many people will rapture from this conference. Because many washed themselves. Many really brought back themselves to my way. But in wisdom he had not come. He wanted to get others in more. Well, when will he come? He has said, let's run up the walk now. So when then? When then? Live in expectation of his coming. After the conference, within this conference, he knows the best time to come. Come Lord Jesus. Get yourself ready. Live in expectation. The spiritual church. Congregate together to worship God and edify one another till the Lord comes, the spiritual church. They always meet together. These things have we written unto you. Yes. And we're letting you know that God is with us. God is with us. We say this that you may be joyful and also come into fellowship with us. For truly our fellowship is with the Father with his, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That is the spiritual church. So, what am I saying? We are in a spiritual church. This place is not a fighting place, a backbiting place, a gossiping place. Place to be looking for women. Place to be looking for men. Cheating place. No, it is not. It is not a place to do evil, to poison anybody, to poison food. To shoot demonic arrow at anybody. No, it will not work. Don't do it here. It's not a place for witchcraft. No. It is a spiritual environment. Holiness. 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 In the hall of meeting. In the place you are sleeping. During eating food. During idle, free, during free time. Every moment, holiness unto the Lord. No carnality. Put away carnality from you. No. Be one against carnality. 
Put away all kinds of carnality and fleshly living from yourself and from the church of Christ. Don't do self-seeking business here. Wanting to let people know I am here. That is not practice in a, in a spiritual church. That is in a carnal church where the flesh dominates. Here is God that will be seen. If God is bringing up any man to be seen, it is that the man will make him to be seen. It's not for the man, it's for himself. Therefore, don't do self-seeking here. Don't do promotion here. Choir, sing for God and not for yourself. It's not actually not your voice. It is your spiritual man that sings the songs that God will take interest in. Because God is a spirit and they that must worship him, must worship him in spirit. Their lives will be clean. Their inside clean. Their outside clean. Worship him in spirit. And in truth, not envy. Not jealousy. Not in backbiting. That will corrupt your songs. Therefore sing righteousness. All shall do all in righteousness. Let there be no special interest. Don't be looking at any woman here with lust. Any man with lust. No, don't do that. Not here. This is a spiritual environment. Put away carnality. God is warning against carnality because he himself is here. He doesn't want it to this place to be made dirty. Do not envy any man or any woman who has found grace in the sight of God. If the Lord brings up a man, brings up a woman, praise God for him. He has come as David to handle our Goliath so that we will not die. So that God will bless our life. Then why are you envying him? Why are you envying her? That should not be done in the spiritual church. He should not. That is in the carnal place there. It's not the church of, of Christ. Which is a spiritual church. Do not live in anger among, among brethren. Little to your provoke. You are speaking evil. Speaking wickedness. You are wrong. You are not born again. You are not righteous. You are not a, you are, you have not met your, you are not worshipping God. You don't know Him. You don't know Him. Our God is spirit. And we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Following the word of God. Humility, gentleness, kindness. That's what He wants us to do for the Lord's sake of Therefore don't bring carnality here. Do not show yourself superior to anyone because of beauty, money, rank, or position. I trust the coordinators and the pastors have learned that to be to the, the greatest in the kingdom are actually the least among men. That your coordinator shows how you are you are among these people to serve them. Jesus said it. I am among you to serve you. I am the one serving you. I am the one washing your feet. I'm ensuring things are all right. I am the one going to the cross to die for you. I am the one. I am the one. Therefore, calm down. Don't make a show of the flesh among your brethren. It's not how much you preach, but how much spirituality is in your preaching. The, the rating is from God. Be humble that your rating may be high. Be humble that whatever you do might have, might have regard in the sight of God. We are in a spiritual church. We are serving the spiritual God. We must be spiritual for the Lord seeketh such to serve him. The Lord seeketh such to serve him. Yes. Do not seek to fight or make trouble. Whatever the offense. If somebody slaps you on one cheek, turn the other. Lender, spiritual man. Lender, spiritual woman. Because you have come to the presence of God. Humble yourself. Yes. Do not keep away from the word of God. When the word of God is going on, don't be littering outside. Don't go and sit under a tree. What did you come here for? You came here for the word? Did you bring your child here for the word? Teach that child to honor the Lord. To honor the word. Leaders, except you have any assignment, be seated at your point of duty and you're listening to the word. One thing is needful and Mary has chosen that good thing. That good part, which shall never be taken away from her, to sit under the law, the feet of the law, and to hear his word. This is an excellent job. It's excellent. 
Therefore, tell your spirit, tell your soul, tell your soul, soul, sit down and hear the word of God. Rebuke your, your body that doesn't want to like to sit down. That is always thinking, go and buy this, go and do this, go and go to the toilet. Go, rebuke it and say, I have come before the Lord. I am here to serve my God. And I will give God the best portion of my soul. I'm not going to, I'm not going to behave carnal. No. I will be spiritual in the presence of my God. Because I need the best from Him. Yes. Do not disobey leadership. What we have told you do. They told you to do registration. It is good. Do it. Contribute your money. It's feeding you. It's feeding others. It's helping us to meet some other needs. Don't keep it away. Because you are a spiritual man. We're in a spiritual church. Everybody is looking for how to help the Lord. To help the work of the Lord. To put a, po a portion. Even the widow. He's, he's mine. He's throwing it. Is it you know that you're keeping yours from God? Necessary thing to do. To help yourself. Help others. You're keeping it away. Then you're not a serious person. Your eyes are blind. You don't have spiritual understanding. You don't have. If you have, you will know that. What a good thing to contribute to the work of my God. Obey leadership. Where they say you should sleep, go there. Go and manage it. It's not convenient how many days, by the way. Go and manage it. Don't murmur. Do all things without murmuring. That ye may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without reproof. Yes, without reproof. In this corrupt world, dark world, that's what the Lord is telling us. Do not give yourself to criticism, backbiting and gossip. This one seems there are more women who go to this type of school more than men. Therefore, woman, where you see people gossiping, don't go there. It will block what they brought you here for. It will mark you negative. Keep your tongue from evil. Refuse it. Refuse it. Abstain from all appearances of evil. Keep yourself pure. I welcome you to the spiritual church. I welcome you to the spiritual church. You will see your God. For he says, he's, our God is spiritual. As we make ourselves spiritual and clean. These few days before the Lord. He will take us to heaven. He will garnish us with the beauties of the Holy Ghost. He will fight our cause against our enemies. He will answer our prayers. Welcome to the spiritual church. Be a spiritual man in the spiritual church. Let's rise up upon our feet. And you tell the Lord you will do just that. You will be spiritual. Your character, your behavior, your attitude will be spiritual. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. All carnality is gone. Righteousness is what you are looking for. For the Lord seeketh such to worship him. People that are diligent. spiritual man in a spiritual church. A spiritual man in a spiritual church. Be a spiritual man. For the Lord seek a search to worship him.
spiritual man is born again serving the lord in humility and holiness following the truth of god's word spiritual man spiritual man spiritual man these are they that worship god acceptably they have the mind of christ they think in god's way for all things work together for good to them who love god who are they called according to his purpose Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are welcome to this church, Holiness Revival Movement. It's a church of Christ, it's a spiritual church. Jesus is the Lord here. The church is controlled by the Holy Ghost. It's not to the glory of man, it's to the glory of Christ. Kill the appetites of your flesh. They that are in the flesh cannot serve God. God is not served with the flesh. With jumping, dancing, breaking everything. No. He served with a pure heart. He served by people, people that are obedient to his word. Following the dictates of his word. Jesus name we pray I will be like Daniel I want to be like Daniel I want to be like Daniel to follow Jesus Christ I want to be like Daniel. I want to be like Daniel. I want to be like Daniel to follow Jesus Christ. I want to be like Daniel. Be like Daniel. Daniel to follow Jesus Christ. He was a man of holiness. He was full of righteousness. I want to be like Daniel to follow Jesus Christ. Oh, want to be like Daniel. Oh, 
He was a man of wisdom. He was full of faithfulness. I want to be like Daniel to follow Jesus Christ. Be like Daniel. Daniel to follow Jesus Christ. Oh, want to be like Daniel. Eternal life, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. Eternal, eternal life. Eternal, sing eternal life. God save my soul. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Father, Lord, I want to oh, in the sand, go marching in. Hallelujah, Lord, I want. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
Savior. Jesus, I will. 